So Mary and Joseph, they get an imperial notice that they had to make their way to Bethlehem. For Caesar Augustus had ordered a census. It was, as you could say, an overreach of the government that gave no regard to anyone's situation. They were forcing everyone to return to their hometown. Magistrates would add their names to the tax rolls there. I can imagine Joseph looking at Mary, who was very pregnant. And I can imagine Joseph looking at Mary and saying, how do we get to Bethlehem? It's not like they could just jump in a car and get there. And in response, Mary shrugged and said, well, how we get anywhere? By foot, of course. Now, walking roughly 20 miles a day, the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem would have taken Mary and Joseph about four grueling days. Now, over the years, readers of Luke's account of Jesus' birth have concluded that Joseph must have brought along a donkey or, or something for the very pregnant Mary to ride. Now, that is a very quick assumption to make and one that grows in our story just out of the romance of the image of it all. Now, set aside the fact that Luke does not say one word about a donkey or any type of animal, then we also have to consider who Mary and Joseph were. Remember when the angel Gabriel appeared to her about bearing the Son of God, and Mary said, basically, she said, I'm all in. Give me the details. And when she visited her cousin Elizabeth, Mary said, this is amazing. God and I are, this kid and I are on God's unstoppable mission. This is going to change the world. Mary does not sound like a meek, and delicate person that Joseph would have to pamper or take care of. She sounds like someone who is stronger than I could ever be, a naturally gifted leader, someone who is fearless. In other words, she was used to physical labor. She was used to working hard. And on top of that, she was constitutionally bold and courageous. Mary was a force to be reckoned with, I think. Now Joseph, by contrast, he was probably considerably older than Mary. There's a number of Renaissance paintings that portray him with a gray beard and a balding head like this picture, Christmas Night, by Fritz von Udi. Tradition tells us that he had children who were older by a previous marriage, very possibly it was very common in that time for women to die at childbirth in that era, or that or some other cause could have very possibly left Joseph widowed. I think it's probably a better way to imagine Joseph huffing and puffing along the paths to Bethlehem. Mary would be the one pushing ahead, remembering from time to time to pause, let Joseph catch up, give him a breather. And if there was a donkey or an animal, I can see it would be Mary to say to Joseph, Honey, why don't you just get a, you know, take a ride for a while? I'll lead the animal. Strong and fit as I imagine her, Mary would still have struggled on that journey to Bethlehem. It is no small thing to walk that far, nearly 100 miles, through rough terrain. And carrying a child in her womb, of course, added to that physical and emotional strain. And she too, I'm sure, was asking along the way, and once they got news of having to do this, how do we get to Bethlehem? But I think she maybe have met something different when she thought of Bethlehem, something maybe like what more, more what you and I mean as we celebrate the nativity. For Bethlehem stands for where God gathers things earthly and heavenly where the divine shines through and eliminates the holy truth embedded deep in ordinary things. How do we get to Bethlehem, I think, means how do we fulfill our longing for God? 
How do we draw near to the holy? How do we get to the face, to the heart of God? How do we come to, be a, come to a better understanding of who and what God is calling us to be? So Joseph, I've imagined, heard Caesar's decree and thought, well, how do we get from here to there? It was a task to undertake. The journey was his to accomplish. It was up to him to reach that required destination, and if he did not, punishment awaited those who failed to make the trip in the allotted time. And I wonder sometimes if Joseph represents how some of us think about how we approach God that we have to pray the right way, that we have to think the right way, that we have to follow the rules in order to get near to God, and life is short, and if we only have so much time to reach our destination, and if we don't do it right, then we're in trouble. I think the amazing miracle of this birth story is that God brings to us a different way of understanding this journey. A very idea, a different idea had dawned on Mary that Bethlehem is the place where the heaven bends low to touch the earth. For that had already come to her. Heaven in its fullness was a dwelling in her womb, and in Jesus the holy had already embraced the earthly. Bethlehem is wherever we are. That is the message that these rough and tumble group of shepherds heard on that night that Jesus was born. Heaven showed up right where you are in the cold and muddy field. And here is the holy. And now you can see it. You will find the holy in a barn wrapped in old rags, sleeping in a feed trough, the angels said. And sure enough, that's just what they found. God bound in scraps of wool and burlap. Many of us yearn for a heart, breathtaking, life-changing encounter with the Holy One. And too many times our busyness and our distraction of our humanness push that yearning aside day to day. But I don't think that yearning is ever extinguished. We want to know how to get to Bethlehem along with Joseph and Mary and the answer that God provides for us on this day is that we are already there. We only need to stop long enough to open our eyes and open our hearts. He asks us to see each one, everyone else, as unique, irreplaceable persons instead of sizing someone up as one of us or one of them. As rich or poor, as successful or not successful, as black or white, as gay or straight, as liberal or conservative, or as winner or loser, or whatever category we put one another into. Christ shows up in our hearts today through this text, through these words, so we can see that God comes to us no matter where we are, to feel the hunger and the sorrow of people around us and the loneliness and the misery of the poor and the homeless, to walk with the grieving and the marginalized, to reach out to the oppressed and displaced. For Bethlehem, you see, has already come to us. This was first pondered by Mary after hearing the words of the shepherds as she lay resting after the birth of her son. So as we gaze today upon the Christ child, through scripture, through song, through prayer and holy communion, may the journey of a strong young woman guide our journey with Christ on this day and all the days to come. Amen.